is tea time. Cheers. I'm Patricia Moore and I come out here week to week to spill my tea. My tea isn't gossip. It is the good news. And I just want to share with you how my relationship has grown with God, how I've become intimate with him and how he's walked me through some seasons. And I hope that after me sharing my story with you, that you'll want to get into a relationship for yourself intimately with God. All right. What are we talking about this week? Betrayal helps to complete the assignment. Now stick with me. I'm going to show you something because betrayal is necessary for our assignment. This is what came to me today. There is a blessing, all right, that can come from a betrayal. Now, we know betrayals happen every day. It could be at home, in a relationship. It could be at work. It could be with friends. It happens everywhere, whether it's jealousy, insecurity, it happens. That's life. We cannot get away from it. But I want to show you some things. If you will open your mind and your heart to receive to why the betrayal can be used for a better purpose. Betrayal, as we, as I already stated, can lead you to your assignment. Want to know how? Listen, it took me a minute to understand. But now after I've sat with God and I've thought about it, I see why the scriptures say, count it all joy. If you have professed Christ is Lord of your life, we all know that to take up our cross is to take up the sufferings with Christ. We experience the crucifixion like our flesh, our body should die daily so that we can show a resurrected Christ. Like we are to be examples of Christ, which means we have to crucify ourselves. We have the opportunity to show that Christ is real and is more evident through us. He's not here. We're here. So what do we have to do? We have to show him by what? Surrendering, following his ways, taking up his suffering. It's not easy. And I'm not going to say it is. And that's why you need a relationship. That's why you need intimacy. But you need it more than anything so that you can get through those seasons of suffering. So you can understand and you can count it out joy. Let me show you why the betrayal is necessary. There's three people that I want to show you who were betrayed and what happened. Joseph, we all know about Joseph. In Genesis 37 through 50, we find that story of Joseph who was betrayed by his brothers. Joseph was favored by his father, but his brothers were jealous of him. They plotted to kill him, but instead they sold him into slavery. Joseph was eventually taken to Egypt where he rose to a position of power and authority. Pause. So you mean to tell me his own brothers betrayed him. They were jealous of him. And here's the assignment. He rose to a position of power and authority. Joseph forgave his brothers and even helped to provide for them during a famine. That's the other part of the assignment. They didn't know by betraying him that they would need him later, that God would elevate him, elevate Joseph to a position where he would be able to take care of his family during a, fam a famine. The story says it's about forgiveness and the importance of trusting God. Why do we need to trust God's plan? Because he has a bigger purpose. Because we all have a purpose. Because there's an assignment. And sometimes it's people that come along that are very necessary to get us to our assignment. All right? Secondly, Delilah. In Judges 16, we find the story of Samson and Delilah. Samson's betrayal by Delilah, which she cut his hair that took away his strength, is a story of how temptation can lead to betrayal. However, there's a however, because there's a what? But God, my son is here helping me tell the story. There's a but God. And I get excited because there's always a but God. Before long, do you know Samson's hair began to grow back, which means what? Strength came back. In Judges 16 and 22, New Living Translation, it says, The Philistine rulers had a great festival, offering sacrifices and praising their God. They said, Our God has given us victory over our enemy, Samson. In Judges 16, 23, it says, Samson said to the young servant who was leading him by the hand, Place my hands against the pillars that hold up this temple where they're praising other gods. 
I want to rest against them. Then in Judges 16, 26, it says, Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me again. Here comes the assignment. Oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held up that temple. Pushing against them with both hands, he prayed, let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistine rulers and all the people. So he killed more people when he died than he had did his entire lifetime. Even though Samson was betrayed, he fulfilled an assignment. He defeated those who mocked God and worshiped other gods. God heard his prayer and restored his strength. In the midst of his betrayal, he still knew to call on the God to help him through, to strengthen so he could finish, so he could finish and give God the glory, the honor, and the worship that God is due. Last one. The most well-known story is about the betrayal of Jesus. Now, listen, I told y'all last week, the coldest thing was Jesus handpicked his disciples. It was 12 of them, right? Peter and Judas. He knew they was out healing, touching people. Probably, I mean, giving a word, like telling them all about God. And he knew those two people was there because he knew he had an assignment. In Matthew 26, we find the story of Judas agreeing to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. That was it. I want to tell you something. It's your choice of what you do with the betrayal. What do you do in those moments of hurt and disappointment? Do you focus on the pain or do you focus on the but God? Do you focus on Lord Listen, I'm in this situation just like Samson did. If you could just give me strength, if you could just give me power, if one more time, God, if you could allow me to just move forward, if you could help me through this so I can get to the purpose that you have created me for, not to focus on my situation, but to change my mindset. To focus on you, God, because you allowed this to happen. You brought me here. And I know you'll bring me through it. So that's when I tell you, sometimes the betrayal is a blessing. And if we could only say, Lord, I know it's a blessing in this. I know you wouldn't allow me to suffer for no reason. When I look at Joseph, when I look at Samson, when I look at Jesus, and I look at, at the end, and God, how you got the glory. That's when we can go back to the scripture and say, count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds. Because when you meet a trial, you can start rejoicing and say, Lord, I know you're about to do something. I know you're about to do something. You picked me. I must have an assignment greater than this situation. Let me not only forgive like Joseph did, forgive them, feed them, love on them. But let me keep my eyes focused on you so that I don't get weary while I'm in this situation focused on the betrayal. You better start looking at your betrayals as a blessing because you never know what plan God is going to have right around the corner. Listen, this past week, God showed up in a mighty way and it ain't got nothing to do with material things. But the way he divinely just spoke to me and showed me people now that he's connecting me with he brought that thing full circle and it makes so much sense now. I'm like, wow, it had to happen. It had to happen. Just like Jesus, he had to have a Judas and a Peter. We have to have somebody or something that will get us along in an intimate place, that will put us in position at the feet of Jesus, where we can just sit there and allow him to be God to strengthen us, to grow us, to mature us, but not only that, to help us finish the assignment he created us for. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that tea. Happy holidays. Cheers. Happy Thanksgiving.